welcome to Panta Kela. Thank you for watching our video. If you like this video, kindly click on the like button and share the video to your friends. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. How to save and load a variable inside the MATLAB. So to load the variable or save a variable, it is very simple. Like here, I have to provide the function like name as save. And previously, I have declared the particular variable also. And therefore, that particular uh, variable will be automatically saved inside the workspace. And therefore, I can also call that particular area for the next per applied code. So that particular demo, here I am providing the value as a equal to 7 save. Okay, so now I'm going to save this particular data. And whenever you are saving this uh, files in .m, never save the files in a exact manner. For example, image mean image processing should not be saved as image processing. Why means uh, once again, whenever you are running any of the function for some of the function name, there are chances to be image processing. So kindly don't save. Better to save this kind of data like this, like a save gr so that uh, it won't interrupt over there, else it will be throwing out an error. And here now I have saved the data. Now I'm going to load the data. So here I'm going to provide load a and b equal to 15, b equal to a plus b. To print out the data, use this pop in saving test low. So 67 plus 15, it is 82. So like that, we can take many sorts of data and save it in the workspace. And from there also we will be able to apply it. Type GUID, just known as guide. And therefore, one of the pop-up menu will be dis uh, appeared over here. So this particular pop-up menu can be set as blank GUI, GA with UI control, GA with access and menu, model question dialog. Since we have to design our own GUI, we are going with blank GUI, which is the default option. And that particular uh, data will be automatically saved into the folder from which the access has been taken. If you want to open any of the existing GUI, click on open existing GUI and select the required path and its file. So now I'm clicking on OK and hence everything is displayed. So everything is displayed in the sense, therefore the automatic codings and everything it has been applied over here. According to the design, whatever we do on the work area here inside the coding also it gets automatically changed. So first, get into the section and uh, decide the size how much you require so if you want to increase the size means click and drag if you want to decrease the size means drag and drop okay so here we have many kinds of functions like button slider radio button checkbox edit text static text pop-up menu list box toggle button table access panel button group active x control from this today we are going to see how to access the button so I have selected the push button. Now I am going to draw that particular button size. Okay, so this is that particular push button. And if you want to do any kinds of editing inside this push button, right click, go to property inspector. So here only we'll be able to edit what kinds of requirement. So the first thing I would like to change the name. So for that, here I can select the string. So click on the string. So now I'm going to create for load section and I'm going to give you the name as First, I will go for save, save, click on OK. And therefore, the tag name for this particular button, it is nothing but push button one. If you want to change, that can also be applied. No issues at all. Now I'm going to design another one button. Right click, property inspector, change the string into load. Okay, so therefore two buttons has been created. Now let us create some functions over here. So now I'm running this just to change the functions in code. And therefore, this is our design. So here push button one is for save and push button two is for load. So press enter under that particular function and type the required one. Here I am providing d equal to numbers and I am providing the function for save. Now, whatever that has been saved over there, I'll be taking it as in different variable and whatever the value we have taken it should be displayed. So now I am running this. Yeah. So first I am clicking on save. So here the first parameter in which variable we have to save the second parameter what is the data we are going to save yeah so that particular function has been saved now load it so in this way only here we will be working with the GUI buttons now the same thing if i want to display it in the GUI itself means so get back to our GUI select 
any of the text function and here I am going to take the static text. So here I am erasing the thing. Only the numbers will be displayed. After that, we have to run the code and enable that particular function. So here the name will be in the form of text. So which data we have to print means we have to go to that particular function and type handles dot text one handles. It is nothing but whatever the GUI we are using and text one. It is its variable. So in which way we have to print it means in the form of string and we have to provide that required variable. So now I am going to first save the data. Data has been saved and load the data. Oh, so here it has been changed as text to sorry for that. So here we can see that static value to increase or decrease the font or to change that particular font size. Everything that can be done in property inspector. So here you can see the font size. So click on this drop down and I can make it to 24 Run the simulation save load. Now the points has been increased. So this is the way we will be able to create a button as well as display the value inside the button. Here I'm closing it. You can open in this way and click on OK. OK guys then thank you all. Thank you for watching our video. If you like this video, kindly click on the like button and share the video to your friends. Don't forget to subscribe our channel.